Chiefs <laughs> are going to sign Chris Jones and Snead? Like, are they going to double French <clears throat> Chai Stack them? Or, like, how do you see this playing out? Like, because they do need both back. I just want to kind of hear your thoughts on that. So And, and sign Mike Evans, don't forget. Yeah, of course. Evans um, is not <laughs> I will say right now, the Chiefs currently hold $15 million of uh, cap space. Now, if the league also gives them more cap space to work with. Like I heard somebody say, was it Patrick maybe that said that earlier? Um, maybe I'm mistaken. Somebody else must have said it. Uh, but if you pretty much in the NFL, if you have positive cap space, you're able to move money around a lot. Uh, the Chiefs are going to be able to do that. They're going to restructure some guys. Um, and I guarantee you uh, a Patrick Mahomes restructure is coming up. I think they've already talked about that. Um, and that could that one move there could clear up double-digit millions of dollars, uh, probably 20 mil plus a season, depending on how they manage his, his deal. Um, yeah, I was looking at that, and I think by Patrick um, restructuring, they're able to free up, I think, if my math works out, roughly about 26 to 28 million. Yeah, then if that's the case, they're going to be able to do anything they want. Um, they will it makes find a, a lot of sense. Nobody's even thinking about that. Yeah, uh, if restructuring. Yeah, restructuring Patrick Mahomes' contract heading into 2024 that would clear 35.6 million dollars. They're going to be just fine. The Chiefs are in good position right now. Um, and not only does it clear 35 mil for this season, I'm sorry, 38 mil for this season. I'm sorry, <laughs> 36 mil for this season, but it clears 39 million for next season, 44 million for 2026. And 20, I'm sorry, 41 million for 2027. And he's only going to be 32 years old in 2027. So <laughs> the Chiefs are set. Like, they're going to be just fine, I think. So you see a three-peat then? Ugh. Uh, I mean, they were my favorites heading into the season anyways to go to the Super Bowl. As much as I didn't want it to happen, um, I never counted them out. And I'm not counting them out as long as they have Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. I agree. And they just signed uh, Steve Spug, Spug. I always butcher his Spagnola. name. Spagnola. Spagnola. Thank you. To an extension. They're keeping their special teams coach to an extension. Uh, they're keeping this dynasty together. And they're only going to improve this offseason. Uh, I'll tell you the contract to watch with the Chiefs, too, is Joe Tooney. Uh, because he has the most base salary uh, at $15 million. So he is the one to really watch out for, for them to work with his contract. Because if they um, turn his contract into a bonus, which they can, uh, they can they can save they could probably save about twelve thirteen million just off his contract. And if you do that, you add the twelve million in cap they already have, plus creating what thirty eight million dollars of cap just from a restructure of one guy's contract. You're talking fifty five million dollars in cap space to re-sign Sneed. Uh, or, I'm sorry, extend Sneed and extend uh, Jones. They're going to, I think they're going to be just fine. I think they're only going to keep one. Jones is not going to take a hometown discount. He's, he, he wants the bank. And he's he, gonna does. Break the bank. he does. He does because, I mean, didn't he hold out, what, two games this year? Yep. He's going to yeah, break he's... the bank. And I think if you've been watching Chiefs Kingdom and just their people, I think the sentiment with that fan base is they rather keep Chris Jones. And let Sneed walk. Yeah. Sneed's had so really think, one solid he's season. Gonna gone. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna get some money somewhere else with another contender. Mm -hmm. But uh, Chris Jones is gonna break the bunt. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets um, yeah. sue money. And also Nick Bolton, I'm pretty sure, is coming up on the last year of his contract in 2020. Already? Gosh. Yeah. It feels so like he was just another, drafted. That's another guy you have to consider. If you don't re-sign Snead, because if you re-sign Snead, likelihood is you're probably not going to be able to re-sign Bolton next year, and he's been one of the best linebackers in football at the inside linebacker spot. That's crazy. He's already. Yeah, he was drafted in 21. Yeah. God bless. These rookie contracts go by so fast, and my problem is, I'm going to tell you guys right here, if I I'm an older school guy. Uh, if in it, if it was me, I would not extend a player until their final season of a contract because, like, I see no sense in 
But the way the league works nowadays, you got to extend a player. It's like if it's a superstar like Justin Jefferson, right as soon as they're eligible, they're expecting mm-hmm. an extension. So I think after the third season, they're eligible. Yes. Um, yeah. But like, if it was me, dude, I would not be doing that until I absolutely had to. And in my mind, if I was the player, I would understand that from a GM's perspective. Like, but I think the league that we're in nowadays, like, you just don't do that. Um, uh, you can't do that. I know. And it just, to me, it, it, it frustrates <laughs> me because I, if I was an owner or a GM, accountant, whatever, <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would be frustrated too. Like, cause it's hard, dude. It's like every year you have to extend a rookie that you feel like you just got two seasons ago. Yeah. And, and you really didn't get to see him all the way yet. Right. Exactly. So I don't know. I, I think what happens is these players, especially on the offensive side of the ball, when yeah. they've done as well as Jefferson and Chase and others, I think what happens is if you don't really start talking to them after that third season, they feel like they're being disrespected. Like, what else do they have to see from me to warrant contract talks? Like, what else do I have to do? And that's when I think that's where it comes into play. That, But to me, it's like, that would be like Justin Fields right now demanding an extension. Knowing, I mean, the dude knows he's heading into his last year of his rookie contract. Like, well, what helps is he has a fifth year option too. But yeah, I guess the first yeah, round pick sort of thing. Point. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I think it, it depends on the, the the position to determine how soon you're going to sign somebody or not. Because you were talking about running backs, or you're talking about defensive ends or interior linemen or interior defense alignment, you got to sign them early or otherwise they're going to break the bank. You're not going to have the money. You got to try to just get it before the market explodes. You know. Yeah, because so. every year there's a more saturation with uh, – and um, what do they call it when you have an excess amount of money? Uh, Your surplus or what? No, uh, inflation the basically. Inflation. The league, like Everything's costing more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Inflation. So like inflation. <laughs> like I so feel like, sorry for anybody that has a up and coming <laughs> linebacker after the Roquan deal. And it's gonna get worse with the Patrick Queen deal. And yeah. there's not many uh, good linebackers coming out of the draft either. And you don't have any. Right. So you're gonna have to either pay them or you're gonna have to let them walk or you're gonna have to try to figure out another way to run your defense. So here's my thinking though. If I was a player, knowing that every single season Players are getting paid more. I wouldn't mind waiting till my last year of the contract because you're likely to get a higher deal that pays you more, at least base salary. Now that does take a risk on like your play and your performance and everything for that last season. But and that's I mean, what an agent. I check. mean, that's 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 the amazing thing about a deal. You can look at it two ways. See, you you're like you would rather wait. If it's me, I would rather take a shorter deal, and then I can go back and get a large percentage of guarantee money and come back to the table two years later. Cause I know I know the mark is going to be more, and then get more guaranteed money and get a and get a better base salary. That's a good point too. Great point. Hey, Uncle Mercy, I know you've been waiting. What's your question, buddy? Uncle Mercy, why, uh, Uncle Uncle Jazzy, why don't you um, why don't you take us home with some fire? We know that you've been um, you've been studying the salary cap as well. Yeah, like it's um, I I sorry I lost you guys there for a little bit and everything, but uh. No, um, I think uh, Gene got it. He may have got it right when he said, uh, you know, 